Does that mean that the other things aren't important? They are important. As a woman who presented herself to the Prophet ﷺ, she said, Ya Rasulullah, marry me. So the, and she presented herself to him. So the Prophet ﷺ looked her up and down. And then he turned away. And said to her that I won't marry you. So, this shows that the Prophet ﷺ looked upon the woman when she presented herself to him for marriage. And then he did not find her to be of his liking, so therefore he didn't marry her. And one of the other companions said, Ya Rasulullah, let me marry her. So he wanted to marry her because he found her attractive. So beauty is something that is important. An attraction between the husband and the wife is important. So if the husband gives up and the wife gives up, then it is possible that shaitan may come in and make that as a, as a means of causing separation between the hearts. So our sisters, beautify yourselves for your husbands. <coughs> Be obedient to your husbands. Educate your children. Give tarbiya to your children. And likewise the husbands, be gentle with your wives, be kind to your wives, but expect obedience from your wives. Don't just sit back and allow your wife to continue to disobey and you don't reprimand. Reprimand, but in the order that I mentioned, with nasiha, with admonition. Even if it means entails that you separate from the bed. But at the same time, know that all of this will bring about an, an, an Islamic home that is established upon the principles of the book and the sunnah. Based upon knowledge, based upon ilm, based upon the durus, and based upon seeking of knowledge and seeking the pleasure of Allah, Jalla wa ala. So that's the brief nasiha that I wish to give with regard to the women and with regard to the families and with regard to the husbands. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. And I hope that we can all benefit from these few words that I've given as a reminder to the brothers and to the sisters. And that we truly make an effort now in establishing the, the Islamic schools in this country, the Salafi schools in this country, in every region and in every, every locality. And likewise that we prevent our children and our families from, uh, from becoming corrupted, from the tarbiyah which is, which is evil and the, and the cultivation which is evil from the kuffar and from the disobedient ones. With regard to the relationship between the in-laws or with regard to relationship with the parents, that is possible especially in the society that we're living in, it's possible that our parents may have some corruption with them by way of sin, by way of when they invite you to weddings, and other than that, or that they, that in their houses generally, that they may have free mixing. So how do you deal with your wife with regard to this? First and foremost, that if you are able, and if, it, if you are capable financially, then your wife has a general right to her own accommodation. And to her own apartment That Shaykh Ubaid bin Abdullah al-Jabri has mentioned That this is the right of the woman That she has a right to her own accommodation And she has a right to her own apartment So the husband if he is able Then he should try To do that with regard to his wife And this is in those situ- And this is more so in those situations When the parents may be involved Due to their ignorance And due to them not understanding And not knowing and not appreciating the deen of Islam That they may be involved in sin Maybe they watch movies, maybe they're involved in music and listen to music, maybe they allow free mixing inside of the house, maybe they invite guests around that don't observe their hijab and so on and so forth, or even that they may become argumentative and they may cause harm upon their daughter-in-law. Or they even in some situations, even the, the, the son himself. In, in this situation, then we should cut off anything or those reasons that are the asbab or the reasons of this difficulty between the mother and the father, or between the mother and the father, and the the children, we should cut off those roots of of, of difficulty. Now, there are many different ways in which he, which a person can do this, and from the best and most superior of those ways, is that we have concern for our mother and father and for their religion, and we teach them the tawheed of Allah and obedience to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we teach them, and we are continual upon this teaching, and we continue to visit them. And we continue to, 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 uh, to mention to them, and we never cease mentioning to them, the importance of being obedient to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And mention to them the importance of not disobeying Allah, that Allah may punish them. And Allah has threatened them with punishment for those sins that they commit. And likewise that we mention to our parents that we love you, and we have concern for you, and we wish to be affectionate towards you and kind towards you, but at the same time we will not obey you in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if my mother or my father, and we love you and we respect you, but however, if you were to order us with sins, then we will not obey you in those sins. So if you were to order us with disobedience to Allah, 
then we will not obey you in that disobedience. We will not obey you in that disobedience. Though this does not remove from us the love that we have, and the affection that we have, and the kindness that we have, and the obedience that we have towards you, in other than the areas of that sin. So though you were to order that we sin, we will not obey you in that. So if you were to invite me to a walima and say to me, come to this walima, or come to this marriage party. But however, at that marriage party, you know that there's going to be free mixing. Video cameras. There's going to be photography. And there's going to be music. And other than that, from the sins. Then we inform them that though we love you, though we have affection towards you, though we will obey you in other matters, in this particular matter, we cannot obey you. So I will not be attending, my children will not be attending, and my wife will not be attending. And the reason is these reasons. And if you were to remove these reasons that has prevented us from coming to the wedding, if you remove those reasons, then indeed we will attend. We Indeed we will attend. So if you prevent the music from being played, and you stop the video camera from, from going on, the photography from going on, the music from being played, the free mixing from taking place, if you to stop all of that thing happening, then by Allah we will attend. Because Allah is not being disobeyed. So therefore they are, they are shown and the reason is given. Because it is not permissible now to punish them. And to say to them and to shout at them. And to say to them, listen I'm not going to attend your rubbish wedding. This is not the way that we speak to our parents. We're not going to attend your sinful rubbish. And you know sometimes our, 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 our tongue is something that, that some of the brothers and some of the sisters, they, they don't control very well when it comes to their parents. The parents who were patient with you when you were sick in your bed as babies and they stayed awake whilst you were suffering and you had influenza or you had some illness and they stayed awake through the night nurturing you and looking after you and giving you medicine every four hours and when you suffered the tears were swelling in their eyes and welling up in their eyes due to the pain that you were, that you were incurring. Those are the same parents now that you are speaking to in a manner that is rude and ill. This is not permissible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden it and regarded it to be a major sin. Even if they are kuffar. Even if your parents are kuffar. Rather what is upon us that we make dua for them. That we guide them. That we aid them. That we give them knowledge. And at the same time we tell them that when you call us to sins, and these are the sins that you are calling us to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden, we will not obey you in them. And as for my wife, or as for the... As for my children, then if they are going to be constantly in that environment whereby sins are taking place, then I would prefer to move, move away from that and to go to a place where we are still close to you and I can visit you on a daily basis. But at least my children aren't exposed to sins day in and day out. So therefore it's important that we, we have balance in this issue. I try, that, I try to make sure that my children or my child doesn't watch cartoons and programs on television. But other family members oppose this and even the father at times. It is not permissible to allow your children to watch that stuff, that sin and transgression that appears upon television. In the terrestrial channels and upon the satellite channels and upon the cable channels. Not permissible to put your child in front of that and to expose your child to that. A child is upon, as the Salaf used to say, that the child is upon his initial upbringing. So if the upbringing initially is corrupted and, and filled with sin and transgression, then the only thing that's going to happen is the child is just going to become worse and worse and worse upon that. So you need to be clear in this issue. Yes, we love you, our parents and our family members, but we will not allow disobedience to take place with me and even more so with regard to my children who are easily affected by these sins. So if the TV is going to be played, and the TV is going to be watched, then I will not come to your house. And I will not come to the house up until you agree that when my children are there, that you are not go- that you're going to turn the TV off. Or that when I come, then I will constantly accompany my children whilst I'm in your house. And every time the TV comes on, then I will take my children to the other room. Or I will take them to a different part of the house. Because it is not permissible to allow... That I will not allow those sins to be committed in front of my children and I will not allow this evil tarbiyah to take place in front of my children. So it is important, ya ikhwan wa akhawat, that you don't tolerate that. And even if your own husband tolerates that, then it is permissible to disobey your husband in that. Not allowed to obey your husband in transgression and sin. Rather, your obedience to your husband is only in that 
which is permissible in the Sharia. 